looking at the camera or looking at you? Oh, look at me if that's okay. Okay, yeah. Thank you. I'm Kate Hudson. I'm General Secretary of the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. And can you tell me a bit about what you guys do here? Well, CND is the biggest and pretty much the oldest anti-nuclear weapons campaign in Britain and one of the biggest and oldest around the world as well. If, if a tactical nuke was dropped on Charing Cross, what would that mean for the rest of London or the UK? The, Im the impact of the bomb when it's dropped, obviously the, the kind of instant bomb blast zone, you know, within that zone, everything is vaporised, you know, no, no one would survive, you know, completely uh, devastated. And then in the kind of subsequent ring, you know, going out for further miles outwards, um, there's a, there will be a firestorm, um, all kinds of, you know, destruction. I think it's something like, you know, some, the majority of the buildings will be destroyed. Um, there'll be very few, if any, survivors, you know. And then going beyond that, you know, the next ring, people will be uh, suffering from terrible burns because of the continuing firestorm. Um, and then, of course, once you've got through that, um, then you start to have the impact of the radiation poisoning. So, I've <coughs> I think I've talked to myself out. <coughs> the anti-nuclear campaign is, you already know that the world must get rid of these weapons of mass destruction, and you're not alone. Most of the world do not possess and do not want nuclear weapons. In 2021, following decades of campaigning from your movement, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons entered into force, banning nuclear weapons for the first time. And while we're talking of time, and clock, and deadlines, isn't it time, high time, that the UK government signed up to the treaty like the 95 other countries that have already done so. Yeah. Furthermore, the UK government must say no to US nuclear weapons coming to this base that we've traveled to today because this can only make the world more dangerous and puts the UK in the crosshairs of any US-led war. Previously, 110 nuclear bombs were stored at this air base, but following persistent popular protest, in 2008 they were removed. Without public opposition, led by CND, they would still be here today. You stopped these weapons finding a permanent home here before. You must unite now to stop them again. You must build on your history and successes. Honour the campaigners that came before you, from the older Marston marches to the women of Greenham Common. You achieved a treaty banning nuclear weapons for the first time. You got rid of American nuclear weapons from Lake and Heath once before. So I'm urging you to work together, to mobilise, to pull the hands of this clock back, back from midnight, away from midnight, for good. You must work together to achieve a timeline that isn't a doomsday clock, but a dialogue clock, a diplomacy clock, not a doomsday clock, but a hopeful clock, a positive clock, not a doomsday clock, but a peace day clock. Pull the hands back from midnight. It was important to be here today. I'm an actor and playwright, and I've written a play about Hiroshima and the atomic bomb, which I've already performed around the country, and we're going to be taking it around the country again later this year. But uh, so CND asked me if I would come and do a, uh, one or two bits today, and of course I was very happy to. But um, yeah, it's a really good day, and um, it's great to be with like-minded people because sometimes it feels quite lonely, sort of um, opposing nuclear weapons. This is 
It's called RAF Lakenheath, but there's no British personnel on it. It's run by, the, by America. In the 60s and 70s, it was an American nuclear base with nuclear bombers. Could we see any campaign long and hard against it, and they were we got rid of them. Now, the plan, the, the proposal is that the Americans were going to bring back nuclear missiles and bombs and base them here, which is an absolutely terrifying prospect because it means that this area could be, would become a target even in a, in a nuclear war, even if Britain wasn't involved. And we'd, we could have no say in what happened. It's, I think it's absolutely terrifying. They're here because they serve military, they serve US nuclear weapons, they are here to facilitate that, here to kill and we need to emphasise that in the local area and make sure people understand that they, who they're serving, who they're working for, because they'll, they, they'll point to politicians as the enemy but they don't necessarily point to military as the enemy and we need to show that they are, they're not friends, uh, they're here for conflict, um, we might hope that we're not on that end of conflict, but we're part of it, we're responsible for it, and it might come to us one day. We might have to reap what they have sowed without having any kind of democratic sovereign position to say whether nukes should or shouldn't be used in a certain circumstance. We have no say, this is not our nukes. And I think the C&D, as you can see, from the age range of people here, yeah, if you're over 60 you might be registered, but there are a few people who are uh, under the age of 60 here, which is sign, I think, that somehow lost generations. Um, but there again, if you look at it, other kind of places, you know, lots of it, a lot of it's retired people anyway, even in, with the climate. They talk about young people being aware of the climate, but in fact, in reality, I don't think they are any more, any more aware than the older, older people are. Why is that? Why, why is that? Well, I think people are getting used to not paying attention when something important is discussed and they get distracted by, um, I don't know, how much the tea costs or whatever. Uh, it's the... Um, I, I think political leadership and all is part of it's responsible for that because uh, government and, and opposition, but particularly government, set, they set the agenda and if they don't want something to be discussed, they've got ways of getting the media to be interested in something else. If we're ever going to have a society worth living in, basically, we need opposition to war and blood money, blood money in every form. I'm ashamed of the um, the media because the media won't allow the truth to come out. They they govern the narrative, so the narrative is always to get people behind the war and gain support for the war when they're not being exposed to the absolute terrible, terrible. <laughs> reality of war uh, is not pretty. I don't know one person who served in the army that's not come back with PTSD, seen their friends blown up, their limbs blown off, seen their friends die. It is not pretty and the, uh, the BBC and all the other uh, media outlets, they they sanitise war, they make it seem honourable for democracy. It's got nothing to do with that, it's about money making, and it's very sad, I feel, that we don't have uh, a media that um, will give us the truth. But obviously that doesn't go in their interest because then they can continue to make money out of war. It doesn't affect them, it affects the people, you know, everyday man on the street. The, you know, we're still here kind of the third time along. So I think it's recognising the importance of continuing to protest mm. because it's an issue that's not going away. When you hear excuses from young people who carry knives, they say, I'm carrying a knife because someone else might be carrying it. Is it that kind of It's thing? the same on a thousand million times bigger scale and a thousand million times more stupid. If we think the kids that do that are stupid, what do you make of people like the politicians that think, I want to have a, a massive nuclear bomb because something else, you know, it's completely bonkers. At least, at least with a knife, you can cut up tomatoes and things like that. <laughs> It's called RAF, so you would imagine it was run by the British Air Force, but in actual fact it's really US Air Force Base Lake and Heath, um, and the American military has been running it for decades now, and there are only 
US troops and personnel on the base. And one of the things we have to do is put pressure on our government. We have to make it very clear that the amount of money being spent on nuclear weapons, for example, that is something that needs to be pulled out of that and put into things that really matter to people. That could be housing, it could be health, also it could be addressing climate change. You know, we're seeing at the moment wildfires, incredibly high temperatures, that sort of thing, linked to climate change. You know, there has to be work done to reverse that. And that money which is going into nuclear weapons, that has to be a part of that. You know, that's that's what taxpayers, most probably taxpayers, would want to see. A few years ago we calculated with government figures um, how much replacing Britain's nuclear weapons system Trident, how much that replacement, which is ongoing, how much that is costing. At that time we had a figure of £205 billion. Um, of course, in the last several years since we arrived at that figure there's been massive inflation there's been all the costs of the inputs are increasing everything like that so that figure is going to be much higher